हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू जोइस टेक हेयर वी आर इन अनदर वीडियो ऑफ माय पांडास ट्यूटोरियल सीरीज इन विच वील डाइव इनटू वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पावरफुल फीचर्स ऑफ पांडास ग्रुपिंग एंड एग्रीगेशन इफ यू हैव एवर वर्कड विद लार्ज डेटा सेट्स एंड नीडेड टू एनालाइज डेटा बाय कैटेगरीज दिस इज द फंक्शन यू नीड टू नो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड हेयर वी आर इन माय जुपिटर लैब इन विच आई हैव ओपनड अ न्यू नोटबुक व्हिच आई हैव नेम्ड ग्रुपिंग एंड एग्रीगेशन we are going to work on a sales data set in this video you can see we have a dictionary here with three keys category sales and profit and their corresponding values in lists we then convert this dictionary into a pandas data frame using this line of code finally we print the data frame to see how our data looks so let me execute this code block so that we can see our sales data set and there you go we have our sales data set ready now since it is ready let's calculate total sales per category instead of manually filtering and calculating we'll use pandas group by function to make it effortless so we are going to create a new data frame which we are going to call grouped equals to we'll write df dot group by and within its brackets within double quotes we'll write category so it's going to print group data but it's not yet aggregated all right so i'm going to print this new data frame grouped let's execute this code block as you can see that this doesn't yet compute any results it just defines the groups when we print the grouped data frame we are actually printing the grouped object hence it shows its type but not the actual results to calculate total sales per category we'll have to use aggregation functions because they help us summarize grouped data so we are going to create another data frame which we will call total sales oh that's t missing over here equals to we'll write grouped that's our grouped object and within its square brackets we will write sales because we want total sales per category and after this expression we'll write sum function so the function sum computes the total sales per category so it is going to print total sales per category all right it's print the total sales data frame let's do it quickly and execute this code block and there you go here we have the category clothing electronics and grocery here we have the total sales per category so the total sales for clothing comes out as 1200 let's validate this as well it is going to be 500 plus 700 so it's 1200 that means this is working fine this is giving correct results now let me also tell you that this result is a series with category as the index and total sales as values that is how we have total sales per category let's try other aggregation methods so along with calculating the sum of sales let's also calculate mean profit so we create another data frame which we call tad data equals to sign we write grouped okay and after grouped we write dot agg within whose brackets we create a dictionary in which we are going to mention two keys number one will be sales and uh, we are going to come to writing the values so wait for a while let's write the second key it will be profit okay this is going to be our second key now we are going to introduce values so the values are going to be sum for sales because we want total sales per category that's why we are writing sum over here and since we are interested in calculating mean profit so in front of profit or as the value of profit we are going to write mean okay and what we are printing what we are printing we are printing total sales and average profit per category that's what we are printing so we are going to print add to data and let's execute this code block to see the results 
here you go we have total sales per category calculated we have mean profit per category calculated in this data frame so in this data frame each row represents a category and columns show the computed metrics let's now compute the highest sales per category for which we'll use the max function so we'll create a new data frame which we are going to call max sales equals to we'll write grouped and within square brackets within single quotes we'll write sales because we are interested in calculating highest sales per category so after this we are going to write dot max that means we are using the max function so what we are doing we are printing maximum sales per category all right and we are going to print max underscore sales data frame let's execute this code block there you go let's check if 2000 is the maximum sales for electronics in our original data frame Yes, 2000 is indeed the maximum sales for electronics. So I believe we are calculating it correctly. If we want to count the number of sales per category, then we have the count function. Let's test it out as well. So we are going to create a new data frame, which we are going to call count underscore sales. After the equals to sign, we'll write grouped within square brackets. Within single quotes, we'll write sales dot count okay and what it is printing it is printing count of sales per category right and we are going to print this data frame count underscore sales let's execute this code block there you go all right we have had two sales per category only two sales per category okay we are not going to go into that because that is how the data is. But the good thing is that we have calculated count of sales per category. If you observe, then in each of these operations, we have used the grouped object. And what is this grouped object? It is simply the data grouped by category. So instead of using grouped, we could have written df dot group by within brackets category right we run this it's going to give us the same result let's go deeper now with grouping and aggregation we'll group by multiple columns now so for that we create another column in our data frame called profit category all right here is a new column profit underscore category which we are creating with these values we will reprint our data frame now There you go. We have our profit category column over here as well. Now we will aggregate sales grouped by category and profit category. That means for each unique combination of category and profit category. So we'll create a new data frame, which we are going to call grouped underscore multi. And after the equals to sign, we'll write df dot group by fill in brackets we are going to start a list okay in which there will be two values first one will be category and the second one will be profit underscore category okay and after the brackets we are going to write square brackets and within square brackets within single quotes we'll write sales and after that, we'll use the sum function. Okay. So what we are printing over here? We are printing sales grouped by category and profit category. All right. Now we are going to print this data frame, which is grouped underscore multi. So let's execute this code block. And there you go. We can see we have total sales computed for each combination of category and profit category now. I don't know whether you observed, but I have been saying every time we are going to create a new data frame like grouped underscore multi or count underscore sales. 
or max underscore sales. But does this result looks like a data frame to you? Because to me, it doesn't. So let's check its type. Let's check the type of this one, which is max sales. Aha, you see the result is a Parna series and not a data frame. Let's check this for this one as well. It is indeed a Panda series. How? Let's see this Panda's code. So you grouped by columns category and profit category and selected one column sales. Then you aggregate it with some function. The result of this is going to be Panda series. But if you want to create a data frame out of it, then you need to group by a column or multiple columns and select multiple columns or use EGG function or aggregate function like we have used here. So if you're going to check the type of this result set, it's not going to come out as series. It's going to be a data frame. All right. So when you ask pandas to return more than one value per group, it results into a data frame just like it has done here. So in this case, or in most of the cases above, if you are aggregating one column, but you want the result as a data frame, then you will have to confine this column within a list like this. Now, if you are going to run this code block, it's going to come out as a data frame. So let me remove this type function and print the data frame itself. There you go. All right, now if you want to see the first or the last values in each group, then pandas provides function for that as well. So we'll create a new data frame, first underscore value. And after the equals to sign, we'll write grouped. And uh, we'll use the first function. And what it is going to print? It's going to print first row in each group. Okay, so let's print this data frame first underscore value. And there you go. This data frame contains first row in each of these groups, clothing, electronics and grocery. Similarly, we can print last row in each group as well using the last function. So let's create another data frame, which will be last underscore value. And we'll use group which is nothing but data grouped by category, which we created in the beginning. And we are going to use the last function now. And what it's going to print, it's going to print last row in each group. And we are going to print this data frame, last underscore value. Run this code block, there you go. This data frame contains last row in each of these groups. That means each of these categories, clothing, electronics, and grocery. And this is useful in time series or sequential data sets to check initial and final values. Let me also tell you that grouped results may have multi-level indexes. For example, we have this data frame grouped underscore multi, where there are two indexes, category and profit underscore category. Now, to restore it into a clean data frame, we can use reset underscore index. So let's do that. Let's create a new data frame, which we are going to call clean underscore df. And after the equals to sign, we'll write grouped underscore multi dot reset underscore index function. This is going to reset the indexes. And uh, what we are printing, we are printing grouped data with reset index. Okay. Let's print this clean DF. And there you go. You can see that category and profit category have been removed as indexes and they appear as mere columns now. We are going to cover more on multi level indexes in the next video. But this was all I wanted to cover under grouping and aggregation in Pandas. And with this, we have come to the end of this video. You just learned how to use group by for powerful data analysis along with aggregation functions to summarize your data. I want you to check out my full Pandas tutorial playlist to learn Pandas tip to toe. 
and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.